All right, chapter three. Everybody get situated. Today, we looked last week at financial statements, and trial balances, and general ledgers, and how everything flows down to these financial statements. Now tell me, what's your four major financial statements? Oh, good God, I forgot. <coughs> Income statement. Retained statement of retained earnings. Trial balance? No. Trial balance is used to prepare. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> it was just a few weeks ago. How did we already forget this? <laughs> balance sheet. We've got income statement, balance sheet, statement of retained earnings, and. Come on. Statement of cash flows. Statement of cash flows. Good job. Good Yay. job. All right. Those are your four major statements. And what is it we're referring to when we talk about the accounting period? Period of assumptions. The period of time of business operations that we are putting under, we'll just say that we're including in our review. This can be reported usually on an annual basis. Sometimes it's broken down into semi-annual or even quarterly for those publicly traded companies. Internal operations may even have it backed on down into monthly or weekly categories or time periods. All right, accrual versus cash basis of accounting. Who can tell me the difference? When are we going to recognize revenues in the accrual period? When earned and expenses are incurred. Revenue. Under the accrual basis, we will recognize revenues when they are earned and expenses whenever they are incurred. Compare that to the cash basis. And under the cash basis, Revenues will be recognized when cash is received and recorded when expenses are paid. Okay, specifically now, let's think about the accounts receivable and the accounts payable accounts. Under the accrual basis, revenues are recognized when they are earned. So December 31st, you provide a service for a client and you bill that client. Now that bill is not received until January 2nd. And let's just use the word, the years 2016 and 17. Under the accrual method, revenues would be recognized in 2016. It was that time period, that accounting period in which they were earned. Now, under the cash basis, bill is received on January 2nd, your client pays it, sends it back in the mail to you, and you receive it January 5th. Under the cash basis, you're going to record it whenever it's received. So in that case, it would fall under the 2017 basis. Okay, let's talk about the revenue recognition principle. Under this principle, we're going to state that revenues are recognized whenever our product or service is delivered to the customer. And under the expenses, under the expense recognition principle or matching principle, we're going to record expenses in the same accounting period as expenses as they are earned. So we're going to record the expenses during the same accounting period as the revenue because the principle states that those expenses were incurred in efforts to earn that revenue. 
So whenever you talk about the matching, the revenue matching principle, we're gonna be referring to an accrual basis here. Under the accrual basis, record it when they are earned. And under the expense recognition or the max matching principle, we would record those expenses as they are incurred. All right, let's talk about making some adjustments. Who can tell me what's an adjustment? Issue? Adjusting entry. And in your text, you should see a chart, kind of a flow chart that's going to break this. Journal entry is at the end of an accounting period to bring an asset or liability account to its proper amount and update the related expense or revenue account. Everyone get that. An entry is made at the end of the accounting period to reflect a transaction or an event that has not yet occurred. So the idea is that we are going to bring them into account. All right, let's look at prepaid or deferred expenses as an example. All right, your T accounts. Everyone remember that? Yes. All right, so let's say on December 1st, 2015. So December 1st, 2015. Fast forward is going to pay $2,400 to cover insurance for 24 months. So they are going to prepay $2,400 to cover insurance for 24 months. This period is gonna start on December 1st. Okay. And let's give this a year. So we're going to close out some years. All right, you as the accountant, you're going to record the expenditure as paid insurance on December 1st. So here's our T account, and we'll call this prepaid insurance. You with me? All right, so for the 24 month policy, we're going to want to put our 2400 here. So this is for 24 months beginning 12 1 of 15. Now, what other expense, what other account are we going to have in effect here? So go all the way back to that accounting equation. Where would we find prepaid insurance? It's an, asset. it's an asset. So that tells you that in order to balance that, we're gonna have to have, and it's Credit. prepaid. We're putting it on the left side here. So are we debiting or crediting? We're debiting it. So are we increasing or decreasing it? Increasing. We're increasing it, good job. All right, so we're increasing it. So that tells you here, that we are going to either have to decrease an asset or find something on the other side of the equation. And let's come over here and call this insurance expense. Now in the first month, what are we going to do? We're going to debit $100 each month to show this is prepaid for two years. So we're going to have to show this being reduced as time marches on. Each line would be $100? Well, at the end of the first month, I would decrease this by... <clears throat> $100, and I'm getting that by 2,400 divided by 24. Right. Now this is gonna bring this in line 
what am I going to do over here? I'm going to credit prepaid insurance by $100. So if I draw this down, what is my balance in prepaid insurance? $2,300. This is what we call the adjusting entry. This is required because imagine you look at this on January 1st. It would be inaccurate to record this asset as $2,400 after the first month. So again, the adjusting entry is required using this expense to bring this account back in balance. Questions? Go ahead. No, <clears throat> so because you, when we were doing um, the balancing and, and making it equal, so the more like you take, okay, I'm gonna do it in non accounting terms. So the more you take away, so $100 every month, eventually that would be like credited of $2,400 and then it would match the balance of $2,400 that you spend on it. Whenever I would close this out, yes, this okay. would continually be reduced okay. until I would close it out. Okay. All right, now where do we need to take it? Where do we take balances in the T account? It's not the trial, no. Take the balance. All right, let's look at the general journal. So from the T accounts, remember we need to put them in the, in the journal. So here in the journal, we would create a line that would show on December 31st. Insurance expense. This will use this debit credits and prepaid insurance. And that would show in our general journal again how I'm reducing over that one month period the expense recognition. This $100 expense in insurance was taken from prepaid insurance. prepaid insurance. So this is what it would look like on your journal. Now another adjusting entry. So you're gonna use adjusting entries, remember, on prepaid items. What other examples are we gonna use on? <coughs> Unearned. Revenues? Unearned. I'm going to put that in the classification of prepaid. Acquired expenses? Accrued. Accrued expenses. What's that called when you go and purchase a new car? And they tell you depreciation. When you drive it off the lot and all of a sudden it's not worth what it was when you drove. But depreciation. All right, instead of expensing large assets, usually plants, equipment, building, cars, etc., in the year it's a purchase, county laws require that we allocate or spread out that cost over the useful life of the asset. Okay, under the first method, we have 
So now let's erase this because we're talking about depreciation. All right, so. Depreciation. What's the first method? We call it the straight line method. And under the straight line method, we're going to take the asset cost. And what are we going to subtract from that? Something called the salvage value. And we are going to divide that by the useful life. What is useful life? The period of time that an asset is expected to produce revenues. Not how long we expect it to stay existence on this earth, but how long do we expect it to continue being used to produce revenues for us? Useful life is gonna expire as a result of wear and tear. And it will say that it has expired when it no longer satisfies the needs of the company. Salvage value. The expected selling price or market value or selling price once the asset has reached the end of its useful life. Okay. Mm -hmm. Give me an example. We're getting ready to. Oh, okay. I didn't want you to jump to number two and start talking about that one. So. No. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to purchase equipment on December 1st for $26,000. So on December 1st, call it 15 again, we purchased equipment for $26,000. And we say that it has a useful life of 60 months. Now, it, how do we know it has a useful life? Is that like a warranty? Give me a second. Okay. I don't know if it'll work. We'll define that. I've had a lot of coffee. And think about that. One way, the counting tables depends on the asset. There are some tables that we can pull from accounting records that will tell us how many years we have to depreciate an asset. So there's certain guidelines that we follow, but sometimes just the ordinary use of equipment I mean, somebody's going to be, some companies are going to be rougher on an asset or they're, they're going to reach the end of their useful life faster than someone else. All right, so we say that they're December 1st, we're purchasing equipment for 26000 We expect it to be used for 60 months. And at the end, it's going to have a salvage value of $8,000. And the equipment was purchased December 1st, and we're going to assume now that we're at December 31st. So one month has passed. All right, let's break this down. We expect it to be worth 8000 in five years. How much cost do you think we are going to have to assume here? What cost do you think we are going to assume over that 60 months? Don't get tripped up here. Well, it says here that you, to, in order to get the monthly cost, you take, where did the 18000 come from? The 18000 is coming from 26000 minus 8000 Because remember, you only want to look at your cost. So because you expect it to have a salvage value of 8,000, you're only taking 18,000 and spreading it over these 60 months. So then you take the 18,000 divided by 60, and that gives you the monthly cost. Or is that multiply? No, divide. Correct. So in this one, this would equal 18,000. And we say that's in 60 months. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put 60 because I'm looking at a month period here. So what's my cost per month? 300. So 
So $300 per month. So we're going to need an adjusting entry for this $300. All right, so again, pull my screen down here, give me more board. I'm going to write it smaller. I'm going to create a T account here. We're going to call it equipment. This looks like a good line for my general journal here. All right, so under equipment on 12.1. What are we going to do? We purchased an asset for twenty-six thousand. But the associated account over here I'm just going to call it, call it depreciation. So the depreciation expense. And at the end of the first month, we're going to record at $300. Now you're going to want to track this so we're going to show a T account for something called accumulated depreciation. Twelve thirty one. We're going to show it as a credit. So the our accumulated depreciation at this point has only shown one month. You mean twelve thirty one? Thirty one or what? Thank you. All right. So up here to the general journal. We're going to show that our depreciation is three hundred. An accumulated depreciation would be credited three hundred. So flip over, tell me what the balance sheet would look like as of February 28, 2018, the last day of the month, it would be minus the $900, so the balance would be $25,100. Correct. So look, on the balance sheet, we are showing, up at the top there, we are showing our assets. Now that asset, again, it would be inaccurate for us to report that asset as a value of $26,000. We've already taken $900 off of the value. Now it would be shown on the balance sheet as equipment 26,000 less accumulated depreciation of 900. And that's important because again, it shows what, how much more of that value remains up there on the balance sheet. Remember how much value remains of that asset as of that day. So if you were looking, you would see that you're probably just now starting that you were going to see that, that you'd acquired a new asset there or that that asset probably hadn't been on the books very long. All right, let's we good with we want to look at unearned revenues. I heard that one earlier. Ooh. 
Or do you think you have it here? I mean, I'd like to, I'd like to cover that. You want to look at one? Yeah. All right. Everybody else is okay with that. <laughs> Too late now. <laughs> Always spoke I mean, to I, this can, I can find a way to. What's an unearned revenue? <laughs> Cash received in advance for providing a good or service. So what would that be? An unearned revenue. Well, what? Can I have like an example of what an unearned? Like what would you pay? This will be the this third method? example. Yeah, I'm showing you an example each time. Okay, I'm sorry. I just need like real life. And We're going to go through a real life example here. Okay. Right now, I'm trying to define what it is, and then we are going to do an example. I want to ask again. Unearned <laughs> revenue, cash received in advance. So, if we have received it in advance, so we would receive cash. Would you agree that there would be a liability on the other side? Because it's old. We are expected. We've been paid to do this. We're required. We're going to carry that. So let's look at an example. Um, one. I'm going to make this one up. Uh, Like it rent. Rent would be an example. All right, so company collects, think of a landlord collecting $24,000 in rent in advance. Let's say it's on September 1st. And they've collected rent for $24,000. I see some puzzling looks there, but in the corporate world, that would not take long to hit. Rents of twenty-four thousand a month. It's like that's a really nice condo, mm -hmm. and I realize we're looking at corporate, not apartments. Well, if you were in Manhattan, or possibly Juniper Beach, Florida, twenty-four thousand for personal level might be. Would be all right, so a company collects 24000 rent in advance on September 1st. The tenant is going to pay for 12 months in advance. So let's break this down, make it more realistic. We'll say the tenant will pay for 12 months in advance and going to start occupying the place on September 1st. So tenant walks in, says, here, write a check for 24000 and I'm going to stay. I'm prepaying for a year. All right, so... Talking about um, so we say the tenant comes in. What I say, September first. So on September first, comes in and pays twenty four thousand dollars for twelve months. So unearned revenue. On September 1st, we took in $24,000. Might be the glare. Yeah, it might be glare from the light or something. Yep. Oh, <laughs> bummer. That turned the, that killed the party. It was good for about two seconds. Yep. You look a little like Jesus. <laughs> you look a little like Jesus on that screen. You're just like, oh, mama. Oh, mama. A lot of things in my life. What is in that coffee? <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy. I, bottle of I drank it really quickly, Ooh. so. <laughs> I'll be 
we get, we need to get the drug screen out here in a minute. <laughs> I'm sweating a lot right now, too. And raise my blood pressure a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Never a good thing. Never a good thing. All right. Just know we have a T account here. September 1st, $24,000. All right, so September 1st, $24,000. Now, what's next? What's going to equal this unearned revenue? Well, remember, it's a revenue. Which side of the accounting equation is that on? Right. On the right. And then liability? Because well, the liability would be on the right, unless you were going to decrease that. So wouldn't we be debiting cash? So each month on our general journal here, let's it's on September 3rd. So we're at the end of the month. If we are going to use unearned revenue, and I heard a liability earlier. Somebody else, what other account are we going to use to balance this? If it's unearned revenue, and then you receive a portion of it, that's account meaning you earned it. So unearned revenue. Oh I'm trying to trick you. We would just call it revenues earned. Look them over here. Accounts receivable. <laughs> revenues earned. Now on that unearned revenue, you're going to show what portion. Here you're carrying the amount you've not earned. This is the liability. You're going to decrease it. Each time a payment would be received, you would make an adjusting entry to show that you did receive, or in your case, you did earn that revenue. Hmm. All right, let's take a quick break. Okay, Oh, that's the worst. Um, glasses. All right, so refer to the adjusted trial balance. We're going to look at preparing financial statements from an adjusted trial balance. We're going to prepare an income statement using the revenue and expense accounts. We're going to prepare a statement of retained earnings using retained earnings and dividends from the trial balance. We're going to prepare a balance sheet using assets and liability accounts and equity accounts. We're going to prepare a statement of cash flows, looking for changes in cash flows for the period. And if you'll look to page 116 of the text, we will start with Magic Company. All right, Magic Company, you see the trial balance, adjusted trial balance for time for the accounting period of December 31st, 2015. And we see here that we're balancing at 199,000. So we have cash of 13,000, accounts receivable of 17, accounts payable of 85,000. Now look at our credits. We have long-term notes, well, we have accounts payable, we have long-term notes payable, we have common stock and retained earnings, less any dividends earned. We have salaries expense, 
And finally, office supply expense. So let's start with the income statement. So real quick, where do I start? <clears throat> so we're talking about magic company. Remember the account. So company name, the report, on December 31st, 2015. I'm going to abbreviate these real quick. Somebody read them all to me. Cash, accounts receivable. Accounts receivable, land. Land. Accounts payable. Accounts payable. Long-term, no payable. Long-term, no pay. Common stock. Return, retained earnings. Dividends, fees earned, salaries, expenses, office supplies, and total. All right, hold up. <laughs> salaries expense mm -hmm. is under dividends. Fee earned. No, fee fees earned is under salary. Fees earned. Sorry. Salaries, expense, and office supplies. And we'll come here and we'll call this debits and credits. And for cash, what do we have a debit of? 13,000. Thirteen Receivables? 17,000. 17,000. Land? 85,000. 85,000. Now I've got to jump over on this side. What's accounts payable? 12,000. 12,000. 33,000. Notes payable is 33,000. 30,000. <coughs> Retained earning is 45,000. The common stock is 30. I'm not really balancing all the way out. Dividends. 20,000. Reduce that. Fees earned. Seventy-nine thousand. Anyone else? Salaries. Fifty-six thousand. And office supplies is eight thousand. And that should equal one hundred ninety-nine. Is it nine? Yes, one ninety-nine. Yeah. Oh no, one ninety-nine thousand. Yeah. Okay. 199,000. Yeah, sorry. All right, so this is where you should look. I'm going to start with the income statement. All right, what items am I going to pull out from the income statement? Well, we're going to specifically look at revenues, revenues and expenses. All right, so looking at the income statement, again, this would read Magic Company. Income statement for period ending December 31st, 2015. So we're concerned with revenue and expenses. So what revenues at the top? So what revenues are we going to look at? Fees earned. Fees earned. What else? Expenses. All right, so fees earned was 79,000. Is that our only revenue? Yes. All right, so expenses. <laughs> what are those going to assume? Salaries and office. Salaries and office. 56 and 8 is equal to 64. 64,000. Notice how I listed. So this would be the salaries and office. And look how I listed each one out separately, summed, and then drew it over in the carried that number over into the right column, line it up with here. Is that it? 
Yes. So what's net income? 15. 15,000. Now for the statement of retained earnings. Where are we going to pull this from? From the balance. Well, you see the starting retained earnings. I was over here. Well, you're going to pull it from the balance sheet, and then you're going to pull it from the adjusted trial balance. Was forty five thousand. <laughs> yes. So this is the prior period. 2014. So for 2014. Now, are there any items that are going to come over here? Remember, we want to add what's what's entitled here to our owners. The income. The income. Right. The net income. Now remember, when you have net income, the company has two choices. We can return that to shareholders or owners in the form of dividends, or we can keep or retain those within the company. Okay, so what our, our net income was, 15,000. Minus dividends. 20,000. 20,000. So what is our ending retained earnings? 40. $40,000. Now next. Balance sheet. Let's look at the balance sheet. <clears throat> what items are contained on the balance sheet? Assets, liabilities, and equity. Assets, liabilities, and equity. All right, so what assets do we have here? Cash, accounts receivable, land. Cash, accounts receivable, and land. And cash was 13000 Accounts receivable, 17000 and land, 85000 So what are my total assets? 115 115000 Now let's look at... Our liabilities. And what liabilities do we have? We have accounts payable, notes payable. So accounts payable, like looking here because I've got it lined up. Accounts payable was 12,000. Notes payable is 33000 Is that it? Yes. All right, so what's the total? 45000 Note that when you're doing this, I mean, you know by, you should already have a figure in mind of what owner's equity has to equal. Take the liability, subtract it from your total assets, and this is how you check yourself, and you know equity is going to have to equal that number. So where are equity components? Common stock. Common stock. Retained earnings. So under the equity, we look at common stock, retained earnings, and common stock. Um, 
and what were retained earnings? Forty. Retained earnings from up here were forty thousand. Does that equal? Yep, it balances one fifteen. So if I take seventy thousand and I add these two up, I get one hundred fifteen thousand. That matches that. So look how from this adjusted trial balance, after you've made all of your adjustments, you prepare the trial balance. From here, you start carrying that information out to the associated financial statement. All right, finally, closing accounts. What's a closing account? The closing process? Or the, wait. Necessary end of period. Necessary entries required at the end of the period to close out these accounts. Closing process. Okay. All right, so what accounts are we going to close? Close credit balances in the revenue accounts. Again, we're closing those out to the income summary. Close debit balances in the expense accounts. Again, those are expenses are going out to the income statement. Close income summary account to the retained earnings. And then finally, close out dividends to retained earnings. What follows is a let's go back to this. Just a five balance. And follow the need to know right under that. All right, let's just look at it and we'll walk through it. All right, so let's look at some ratios now. Starting with the profit margin. What's the profit margin going to tell us? The turn on sales. The profit margin ratio measures the company's net income to sales. So profit margin, net income. Divided by sales. Okay, it's going to show how are we padding the owner's pocket based off of our sales. Hey, if you were investing or looking at a company or your mission was to return income to shareholders, pay them dividends, you must ensure that your profit margin is sufficient to satisfy that dividend. Now, higher, private, higher margins are gonna tell you that you have higher discretionary income at the end of the accounting cycle. You're gonna have more discretionary income to do something. Current ratio. What we call the current ratio. And it's used to evaluate a company's ability to pay a short term obligation. So it's current assets when the current liabilities. 
how likely are you going to be able to pay a short-term obligation? So we're gonna take current assets. Remember, those that are expected to be used within one year, and we're gonna divide that by current liabilities. How likely we're set to pay. Sometimes we will look, and if a company wanted to become more stringent on evaluating, They will even take the current assets and divide it by all liabilities. But no, in this example, we're gonna to refer to current ratio where we're just taking current assets divided by current liabilities. But again, if you were looking, if you wanted to be real certain, you might substitute this for total liabilities. Any questions? That is chapter three. <laughs> oh, wow.